In this video, my friends, we'll be looking at the AU9000 by Samsung. This is a really affordable TV and the results are also pretty surprising. Let's take a closer look. Don't forget to hit the red button to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up and click the notification bell to get my next video first. So this TV from Samsung is one which you may have not heard too much about. It's been out for a few months now. I picked up mine for 799 English pounds. You can now pick this up for 699 pounds and I'll leave the latest links for pounds and dollars in my description. Now there's nothing much to say about the actual design of the TV. The legs are very basic. There's a plasticky feel to the whole thing. It isn't particularly great if I'm being completely honest. But this is a VA panel, which again is quite surprising. And that, my friends, is something which a lot of people do look out for. I'm more on the fence because I've had some great IPS panels and also some great VA panels. Now, the legs is a single attachment. What I mean by that is there are no options to put this anywhere other than that middle, which... To be honest with you, I don't like that much. I think that although it's great for a smaller TV stand, it just, in my opinion, looks a little bit odd. They just seem too close together. What's your thoughts? Let me know. It's around 10 or 11 inches, and I guess that's fine if you've got a small TV cabinet. In terms of connections on the back, everything that you would expect, there's three HDMI, HDMI 2 doubles up as eARC, and obviously at this price point, don't even think about things like HDMI 2.1. You're not gonna find that here. Having three HDMI ports nowadays I feel is a little bit mean, especially if one of those is going to be dedicated to a soundbar, that only leaves two inputs. And if you've got multiple consoles, well that could be an issue. I mentioned about the build quality, and it's okay, it's just a little bit plasticky and a little bit plain on the back, but then you're not looking at the back and things definitely get better when you spin it round. There is a 200mm by 200mm visa mount, which is ideal if you want to mount this on a wall. And if you do want to mount it on a wall, well I'll come on to the thickness later, it is surprisingly thick then. So that's the back of the TV. You do have minimal cable management as well, which again I think is nice to see. Even my rather thick HDMI cable fits nicely into the back of the leg. It didn't quite fit into the grooves on top, but it was hidden by the leg, which again is a nice touch. Okay, so we're taking off the film now and we can have a look at the front of the TV. And this is where things definitely get better. The bezel around the edge of this TV is incredibly thin, far thinner than I was expecting, although I am now showing you those legs again, which I really don't like much. Now, I mentioned earlier about the thickness of this TV. This thing is super, super thin. This is the 55-inch model that you're looking at, and it is only a few centimeters thick. So if you are going to be mounting this on a wall, it's going to look absolutely stunning. The TV runs Tizen software, which again is still my favorite software of any of the major brand TVs. The others are starting to get a little bit better, but in my opinion, Tizen just pips it. Right, we're now set up so we can now have a look at how good a picture this TV does. Now we know that LG and Sony have both updated their software this year, but I was pleased to see that Samsung kept theirs the same. It's still exactly the same type of interface, it looks really good, it gives you incredible amount of customization, and probably the key fa factor is, is that it's so easy to operate, no matter what your standard of operating these TVs are. Everything is explained and it is very, very simple. I mentioned earlier about the bezels and I'm pleased to say that when you turn the TV on you get the same minimal bezels, there's no extra thick bars around the edge of the TV, it works really well. And it gives the overall feel that this TV is just another step forward and it does feel a little bit more modern and I think it actually gives the impression that it's a little bit more expensive than the price range that it actually sits in. Obviously apart from those legs, but put this thing on the wall and it's going to look absolutely great. Okay, now we're looking at things like DSE, now dirty screen effect, and this is where you can sometimes see some obvious errors in the screen. Now, at this price point, you would expect to see some type of discoloration, but we're hoping for it not to be too bad. And I'm pleased to report that on this TV, it is very, very good indeed. And if I run through the color spectrum, one, you get a good idea of the reflections of this TV. So this is in a light room, it's the middle of the day, and as you can see, the reflection is not too bad at all. But as we go through the different color ranges and get closer to white, you'll see that there are no obvious dirty areas of the screen. And even the corners are not that bad at all. 
Now certainly this is far better than a number of TVs that I've had recently which have been far more expensive. In fact I remember looking at a Samsung one which cost around seven or eight thousand pounds and that was almost unwatchable and I know my friends over at Digital Trends they had a similar one with one of the latest QNEDs which had dirty screen everywhere it was terrible but this doesn't look too bad at all and even if you go through different colors again it's looking pretty good. This TV has a peak brightness of around 350 nits, which means that's the brightest that it can get. Now, if you're watching at night, it's not gonna be any issue at all for you. And even this experience with me watching during the day, I haven't got any problems at all with this TV. I think where you may find it struggle is if it was a really bright room on a particularly sunny day and you're opposite a window, but then to be honest with you, I think almost every TV would struggle in those circumstances. And there's probably only a handful of TVs that I've seen that copes well in that type of environment. But for what I've put through this TV, I'm really impressed with the picture. I think, again, it delivers a better picture compared to the price that you're spending. And that has to just mean that you're getting value for money. And all that we can really ask for in any TV is that you get value for money. The wide range of TV prices means that you could be spending £200, $200, or ten thousand dollars ten thousand pounds but if you can say that you're getting good value for money well then the manufacturer has delivered and i think on this image as you can see they definitely have now for the majority of people they're going to be using their tv for watching standard definition television or high definition at 1080p it's not all going to be those amazing 4k sources so how does this tv deliver at standard watching tv well i think it does a really good job Colours were natural and skin tones were very, very good. My recommendation if anyone wants to test a TV is probably not to avoid so many of the slow motion nature scenes where pretty much every TV looks great, but concentrate on things where there's lots of faces in or even sports. Now that can be hard to put across on a video like this because of the restrictions in copyright, but seeing those blocks of movement, whether it be a face or a sporting pitch move, will give you a much better idea. This being a Samsung TV doesn't have anything like Dolby Vision or Dolby Atmos, so there's really no point talking about things like that. It does have HDR10 support, but again, at this level and at this type of nit level, you're not going to really be able to tell the benefits. Certainly, I would say for watching normal TV and normal everyday function for the average person, they'll be very happy with the contrast levels and the black level detail. It's definitely not anything like an OLED, so don't consider it against an OLED, but if you're looking at a similar price LCD TV, well then this is still one worth considering. This being a 50 hertz panel means that you're not getting things like the faster refresh rate and therefore when it comes to gaming you're also not getting HDMI 2.1 which you wouldn't expect at this price point. Gaming however does feel fun, crisp and there is no noticeable delay. The input lag is still very very good. I do feel that sometimes with these newer technologies that have come out we're almost thinking that we're missing something which we never had a few years ago and we were all quite content back then. What I would say is if you are into online gaming, then spending more money and getting HDMI 2.1 and a 120Hz refresh rate, well, you'll see the advantage of that far more than maybe someone like myself that just does the occasional gaming for enjoyment. But don't think that this is going to do a bad job. It certainly isn't. Certainly, for the majority of people, they won't even notice the difference. There is only one other area which I just don't think is that great with this TV and that is the sound quality. I would definitely recommend taking advantage of that eARC, the enhanced audio return channel and getting a sound bar to go with this or a 5.1 surround system. But I would recommend that with any TV, no matter what the price. So guys, finally, in summary, I would say that this is a good value for money TV. It delivers an impressive picture, one which I was more pleasantly surprised at than what I thought. I thought it was gonna be worse and I thought we were definitely going to have more issues with things like dirty screen effect. This is a nice clean VA panel and I think that it's definitely one that you should consider and if you can get a deal on one of the larger sizes well then you're doing a great job. One thing that I don't like and let me know if I'm going on too much about it is I really don't like the feet on this TV. It almost looks like Mr. Strong the old Mr. Man but hey you let me know what your thoughts are. 
Now, just a quick note, guys, interrupting this video because I have found the same TV but with a different stand. It seems that Samsung knew I was right about that stand, and now with some of the latest models that are being released, you're getting this stand. I'll leave the link to the Amazon page which has got this particular model in. Also, I've done some research into other parts of the world, and I think it's not quite ready for release in places like the US and abroad in Canada, but I'll keep you updated with links in the description. But I'll put the link there for you to check it out for yourself. Thanks very much, guys. Guys, that's it for my review of this, the Samsung AU9000. I hope it has been helpful for you. The links are in the description for you to check out the latest price in your area. Thank you so much for watching it, and I will see you on the next review.